My name is Insuk Kang, and I am an assistant professor of computer science at Carnegie Mellon University in the US. And my research is in software quality assurance and safety. And it is my great pleasure to introduce you to some of the ideas and ongoing research in this field. So when people think of the term software, they typically think of applications that look like this, including social media apps like Facebook, Twitter, mobile gaming, Excel and PowerPoint, and banking applications. Now, more and more software is used to control systems that look like this instead. Um, software with machine learning is being used to enable autonomous systems like self-driving cars and robotics. Software is used to control smart grids and other types of critical infrastructure systems. Software has been used for a long time in medical devices to treat patients at hospitals. So one commonality across these type of systems is that they often closely interact with human beings in our environment. Because of this close interaction, a failure in these systems can result in serious injuries, deaths, or damage to the environment. To give you some examples, one type of systems where a failure can result in serious consequences for users is in the domain of medical devices, such as infusion pumps, radiation therapy machines, and electronic health records. According to the government statistics, between 2010 and 2020 in the US, there are around 80,000 deaths and more than 1.7 million injuries resulting from medical device errors. And the actual numbers may be higher because some of these incidents are not reported by hospitals. Another type of system that we should be worried about is the critical infrastructure. Within the US and around the world, recently there's been a number of attacks on nuclear plants, water supply chains, oil pipelines, and other types of critical infrastructure systems that our society relies on. For example, in 2021, a hacker in Florida, US, was able to take over the software within a water supply plant and try to poison the water that is being consumed by citizens. Fortunately, the attack was discovered before it was carried out. We can imagine how horrible the outcome could have been if the attack was successful. Finally, I'm sure many of us have heard about accidents involving machine learning and AI-based systems such as self-driving cars. AI has great potential to improve the quality of our lives. At the same time, there are also increased risk of a failure in these systems. One major challenge with AI is that it's often difficult to predict when something goes wrong with AI, and it's much harder to build systems that rely on machine learning and AI. So the overall question that I'm interested in is, given that a failure in this type of systems can result in serious consequences, how do we ensure safety and reliability of these systems? Traditionally, the way to do this is through what's called software testing. Here, the developers of the system first create the software that they would like to deploy, and then they manually come up with a set of test cases or test inputs. Next, for each of these inputs, they run it through the software and they inspect the output to make sure that the output is as expected. If the output is different from what the developers expected, then this could suggest that there is a bug in the software that needs to be fixed. One of the major limitations of testing as captured in this well-known quote by a computer scientist named Dijkstra is that testing can only be used to find bugs, not to prove their absence. The problem is that in general, there are infinite number of possible scenarios in the system. And for developers, it may be very, very difficult, if not impossible, to come up with test cases that cover all those scenarios. So what this means in general is that there may be corner cases that are missed by the developers during testing. And these corner cases may end up causing a failure in the software. For example, a self-driving car must be able to detect and avoid pedestrians and objects. They may look very different from what you expect normal normally. For example, a person dressed as a chicken or a car that doesn't actually look like a car. 
And if the system cannot handle this kind of corner cases, that it may result in an accident. So the challenge here is, how do we provide guarantees about the system, the safety and reliability of the system, beyond what can be achieved through software testing? Another discipline of engineering that we can take inspirations from is the field of civil engineering, which deals with the design and construction of physical structures such as buildings and bridges. How do civil engineers ensure that structures do not collapse even under harsh environmental conditions? One type of techniques that are commonly used is called a structural analysis, which involves creating a model of the design of the structure and using mathematical analysis to ensure that the design is able to withstand external forces on the structure. One key point here is that this type of analysis is done through during the design stage before the actual structure is constructed. By making sure that the design is safe, the goal is to ensure that the structure that results from this design is also going to be safe. So one question here is, can we apply similar kind of approach to software? Can we design a software system to be safe from the beginning instead of building it first and then trying to test it afterwards? So one approach to do this, including in our own research, is to start by designing an architecture of the system. A software architecture is a type of design artifact that describes the system in terms of its high-level components and connections between those components. You can think of this as blueprints that architects and civil engineers will draw when designing a structure. Let me give you a more concrete example of a software architecture. So consider a self-driving vehicle that uses machine learning and AI to detect various objects around the street and then safely navigate around those objects. These type of system rely on what are called deep neural networks, which are now the most popular type of machine learning based components. They can be extremely complex and difficult to manually test Although they perform very well on examples that they've seen in the training data, they often tend to produce incorrect results on unexpected scenarios that do not appear in training data. Meaning that it is possible and very common for these kind of components to make mistakes. To overcome this problem, one possible way to design the architecture for the vehicle software is as follows. In this architecture, we have two different types of vehicle controllers. One that is based on machine learning, another one that's called safety controller. Normally, it is the action generated by the machine learning controller that is used to maneuver the vehicle. But the safety controller is going to sit between the machine learning based controller and the actuator of the vehicle. And if the safety controller decides that the action generated by machine learning is unsafe, it's going to override that action with a default safe action. The key idea behind this approach is that the safety control itself is based on traditional non-machine learning based logic, which is much easier to analyze and understand. Therefore, this design will ensure that even if the machine learning component makes a mistake, we have a high confidence that the overall system is going to behave in a safe manner. Once you have designed the architecture, the next step is to actually analyze this architecture to make sure that it is safe. For this, we apply a type of technique called formal verification. Here, a verification tool takes a model of the architectural design and a specification that describes what it means for the system to be safe. For example, in the case of the vehicle, it's going to safe na na safely navigate around the objects in the street. Then the verification tool will apply mathematical analysis to verify whether the design is indeed safe. And if not, it will produce an output that describes possible flaws in the design. Given this output, the developer can take, go back to the architecture and fix it to address the issue and then apply the verification again until the tool tells us that the design is indeed safe. So one difference between testing and verification is the type of guarantee that it provides. In testing, the developer manually creates a set of test cases 
And thus, there is a chance that some corner cases will be missed. In comparison, verification does not require the developer to create manual test cases. Indeed, it uses the computer algorithm that is able to automatically simulate and explore all possible scenarios in the system. This means that verification can provide much stronger guarantees of our safety than testing does. Now, that said, there are a number of open research challenges that need to be solved before this type of approach can be applied more widely. First, what are the right kind of architectures for emerging machine learning based systems? Second, how do we model users, the environment, and the interaction between these users and the software? Next, how do we specify what it actually means for systems to be safe and reliable? It turns out this is actually a very hard thing to do, and there is a lot more research that needs to be done here. And lastly, how do we efficiently verify a very large, complex software design? So in our research lab, we're working to solve some of these challenges and applying this type of approach to a wide range of application domains, including autonomous drones, medical devices, security protocols, and IoT devices. So to conclude, software systems are becoming much more complex every day. And as a result, they also pose greater risks to our society. And traditional techniques such as testing, although very important, are not sufficient to ensure the safety and reliability of these systems. So in this talk, I tried to convey to you that emerging techniques in safety architecture and verification can help ensure safer and more reliable software systems. Thank you.